Yo, you gotta admit, I'm getting pretty good at this clickbait game. Well, hold on a second, because you'll be surprised at how many people think they're keeping their gear nice and shiny, but secretly damaging their gear in the long run. Like, for example, who knew that dropping a lens into a pool filled with chocolate would ruin that lens forever? No, but seriously, they did that once with the latest Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know, the one with Johnny Depp. They had a cable cam system set up over the set, and then a Panavision lens estimated to be over $500,000 did a swan dive into the chocolate pool was wound forever. Oh, but dude, those Oompa Loompas though, they freak me out. I've been attacked before, okay? I have trauma. Just kidding, Deep was actually a really cool dude besides the fact that he beat the shit out of me. Now lenses themselves can last 30 years or even much longer, especially if you know how to take good care of it. So if you're gonna dump an entire paycheck into a piece of glass, let's talk about what you should know. First of all, it's always gonna be better if you can do it in a clean environment. So since I already got my clickbait thumbnail, let's get out of here and uh, go to my apartment. Did I just seriously say, let's go to a clean place and then suggest my apartment? My apartment is still covered in confetti from the last video. All right guys, so I'm back at my apartment now. And if it looks like I just finished crying, it's because my microphone suddenly stopped working. You have served well, and also my roommate's cooking something with onions. I called customer support and we can't figure out what's wrong with it, so I have to send it in for repair. It's all Chris Rollins' fault. Now before we get into this segment, I'm just gonna give you a little warning that there's a lot of contradictory information on how to care for your lenses properly. But one thing that everyone can generally agree on is if you're in a dusty environment and then your lens gets a bunch of dirt on it, last thing you wanna do is pull out one of these from your pocket and then just like rub that all off. If your lens has dirt on it and you take a dry piece of cloth and just rub it in, you're essentially creating a mild sandpaper. Over the years, you're gonna slowly start grinding away at your lens and eventually everything's gonna look bleh. So rule number one is that before you do anything, use air first, like this guy. These things are basically the safest form of compressed air you can use. It's always gonna be the right amount of pressure and it can get a lot of the dust particles off. You'll be surprised at how often your lens looks perfectly shiny after just giving it a couple passes with this. Some people like to use canned air like this, but sometimes you risk kind of like that happening if you shake it up or you spray it upside down. You definitely don't wanna be spraying a $20,000 piece of glass and have this happen to it. Ouch. There's also the option of kind of just blowing off the lens, but of course there's that risk of you spitting into the lens accidentally. And I'm sure we've all seen this, where we haze it up with our mouths and then clean it off that way. There's some contradictory information on this. Some people say it's fine, but some people say your breath can be acidic and the enzymes can eat away at the coating of the lens. I'm not a saliva scientist, so I don't know for sure, but generally speaking, I'll do that if I really need to on a cheap lens. But once the lenses get into the thousands of dollars range, I only use this. Another thing everyone generally agrees on is that you should never ever touch the lens unless you need to. You only wanna make contact with that lens lens if you got like a smudge or something that won't come out with air. So yeah, the next rule is to only clean your lens if it's dirty. Don't touch that thing every time you pull off your lens cap. And the reason's obvious, right? You don't wanna have like a speckle of dust on here while you're cleaning it out and end up scratching your lens. Scratches, no good, but another thing to consider is the coating on your lens that's super important. For example, this lens has similar, if not the same exact glass as its broken on little brother, which is about a 10th of the price of the this lens. So a lot of the upgrades actually takes place inside of the coating, how they process the glass after they're done with the lens. So if you were to go through and clean this lens with something like acetone, you may look at it and be like, oh, it looks so clean. But there's a lot of ingredients out there like acetone, which will completely strip away all the coating in there. So you're removing what makes this lens more valuable. So with that in mind, the next rule is to always use clean fabric. A lot of people just take cloth like this, stick it in their pockets, throw it in their dirty packs. When your pocket it's picking up lint and all this other junk that's in there and then you're taking this and rubbing it against your lens you don't want to reuse these over and over either and your oils from your fingers are getting onto it and all this contamination that you're about to put onto this coating so if I'm gonna carry around little microfibers I always keep it in kind of like a plastic container like this or this so that it's protected from the elements and generally speaking I only use these a couple of times these are expendables I throw them out or use them for something else if you throw them into the laundry you want to be careful 
careful because what chemicals are in your laundry detergent and some of those chemicals may end up eating away at your coating. Better than these microfibers are something like this. These are Kimtech Delicate Task Wipes. These seem to be the industry standard when it comes to the Pro Pro lenses. There's also packages like this, which is kind of like a little booklet. Tear a piece out, use it clean. These are all one-time use only, so once you use them, they're contaminated, throw it out. And there's also brushes like this that are specifically designed for cleaning lenses. And these can help just flick off those little particles that are in there. The next thing is your solution, and this is where there's the most contradicting information. I've heard some people say don't use solution unless you need to because the alcohol from it can eat away at the coating. You can use Windex, you can use this, and you can use that. But here's what I hear most commonly from the pros. Paint Grow seems to be the industry standard and it's specifically designed for lenses. Whatever solution you use, make sure it's specifically designed for camera lenses. They say don't use solution for eyeglasses because a lot of those can contain silicone and that's not good for a lens coating. Definitely don't use anything with any acetone in it. And there's a million different ingredients that they say is good or bad for your lens coating, but generally speaking, everyone seems to agree that paint grow is a pretty safe bet. So these three seem to be the golden combination I see everybody using. Never, ever, ever spray solution straight into the lens. Liquid is a lens's worst nightmare. Most high-end lenses are designed to be weather sealed, but just in case that small droplet happens to sneak in there, it can cause mold. If you're in a high humidity place, you wanna keep these lenses as dry as possible. Always dry them off before you store them. If you've ever been shopping for some vintage lenses, you know that fungus is the worst enemy of aged lenses. Try to keep these things dry as much as possible, and another reason to never spray directly onto the lens. You generally want to bunch up one of these things, give it a little spray, lubricate it, and ride it out. Always do circles, start in the center, and slowly work your way out. Right in here in the center, and then do circles, slowly work your way out to the outside. And if there's any liquid left on the lens, then immediately dry it with a dry side with the same pattern. And I've heard people say it's always good to use some liquid on your tissue like Pancro because it acts as a lubrication as you're rubbing it. Because rubbing it hard with something dry can shave away at the coating. Once the front of your lens is nice and sparkly, go ahead and do the same to the rear. Another thing to keep in mind is when you pull off your lens, don't leave that sensor exposed for longer than you need to. If a piece of dust gets in there, it can show up in your image. And sensors are fragile and sensitive. You just want to keep it protective with something at all times. And also keep in mind that where you store your lenses can affect the longevity of your lenses. You don't want to leave it on a shelf where it's going to get dusty all the time because again, even though they're supposed to be weatherproof, if a piece of dust gets into some of the elements inside of the lens, it can get really tricky to try to get it out in the future. So always try to store it in a case or somewhere where it's dust proof. I keep all my expensive lenses in a pelican like this, which is actually waterproof. So if you have a bunch of lenses sitting on a dusty shelf, then throw it in a case, throw it in a box. You don't want those dust particles to slowly start sneaking into your lens. And finally, whenever you're dealing with cinema lenses like this, you always want to reset it before packing it away and transporting them. So take your f-stop, set it wide open, and take your focus and set it to infinity. When it's wide open, the lens is in its safest position. See, when you close down your iris, see all those blades that come out? They're prone to being damaged when they're exposed like that. So when you take that iris and open it wide open, that's where it's most protected. So it's least likely to get damaged if you hit a speed bump too fast, or if you put down the case too fast, or any sort of impact. Those little blades in there, super precise tools, you do not want to mess with those things. Do that and your lenses will be a good long-term investment for you. I'm gonna clean all these lenses. I'm about to head over to Orlando, Florida for a shoot. I'm shooting it for only one day. I'm gonna land there, I prep the cameras, I shoot the next day and fly right back. I'm gonna be exhausted. Busy week for me, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week. And Slate, marker. It's not even nine minutes. For those of you that don't know, you basically make more money off AdSense if you make videos over 10 minutes. And uh, so yeah, this is my desperate attempt of making this video over 10 minutes. I don't know, I guess we could just talk about stuff for a minute. I don't know, what do you think, Chris? Hi, I'm Chris Rollins. I'm from Texas. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Are we at 10 minutes yet? It's uh, nope. 
Uh. All right, so I just finished a five hour flight all the way to the opposite corner of the country. This time tomorrow, I'll be heading straight back. So it's gonna be a very quick trip. Everyone here seems to be here for Disney World, except for me. Kind of makes me wish I was going to Disney World. I could just delay my flight and just go by myself. Is that weird? Yeah, it's weird. Florida is a pretty weird place. It's like sunny and it's like pouring rain. What is this place? 